Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to talk about people who self-diagnose on Tumblr. Just want to put something out there. <laughs> if you self-diagnose on Tumblr with depression and anxiety, I can see that it might be likely that you're right, because depression and anxiety are pretty dominant mental illnesses right now, and they're common. However, if you're on Tumblr and trying to diagnose yourself with something extremely rare that's hard to diagnose, it's not likely that you have it. Either way, whether it's something common or not, always just go to the doctor. They didn't go to school for eight years for nothing, okay? There's a lot that they know that you can't find on Google. So, first of all, we have someone here, <clears throat> and it says, Okay, just saying, if you're white and your diagnosis was paid for by dear old mom and dad, you better think real hard before you condemn somebody for being self-diagnosed. So, what does being white have to do with anything here? I mean, I know there's the whole trend of, like, saying white is bad all the time, but I don't understand what this is about. Um, if you have your mom and dad that can help pay for a diagnosis, good for you. If you can get a diagnosis, good for you. I don't know what being white has to do with it, so... Moving on. Here. Things you need a diagnosis for. Medication, disability benefits, legally recognized accommodations, things you should not need a diagnosis for, people believing you when you talk about your experiences. Okay, I agree to some extent. People should listen to you and believe your experiences. However, your experiences relate to the way in which your brain perceived reality perceived keyword. It doesn't mean that your experience exactly reflects reality. When I tell a story, I'm telling my own perception of the story. And if you're self-diagnosing, that's why they might not believe you, because if you are mentally ill, it does color the way you see things. Meeting being depressed colors the way I see things. Here we have someone just saying, this vlog is self-diagnosis friendly. And then under, they tagged, actually dissociative, Hashtag dissociative identity disorder. Dissociative identity disorder was previously known as multiple personality disorder, and it is defined as a condition wherein a person's identity is fragmented into two or more distinct personality states. People with this rare condition are often victims of childhood abuse. So then, when I look into the causes, it says that 90% of the people with DID had childhood abuse, physical and sexual, okay? So 90% of the people have had trauma. There is a small group on Tumblr that claims they have not had trauma and yet they have DID and they're also self-diagnosed. So they believe that they're in the 10% minority that has DID without trauma and they can diagnose it themselves. Do you like see how conceited someone has to be to think that they know better than any doctor in the world? People who claim to have DID, who haven't had any trauma, go by the name endogenic, okay? Here we have another one. Friendly reminder, endogenic systems are real and existing today. No one else can dictate your reality and what you are experiencing. No, no one else can tell you what you're experiencing, but other people, called doctors, can tell you why it is you're experiencing it and whether you're ill or not. So every idea we have of our own brain is not inherently valid. I can't just say, oh yeah, I'm psychotic. I can't just say that. I have to go see someone. My behavior has to fit with it. It's not just like a label you can put on yourself. We have another one that says, this blog is self-diagnosis friendly. Okay, whatever. Thanks to a subscriber. They haven't let me know if I can use their name, so if they do say yes, I'll put their info here and in the description. They sent me this chart, and here it says that they want to protect, they want to see it grow healthy, and they want to tell their friends and neighbors about it, and the it is their alter, so their other personality or ease. And here it says, when you hardcore crush on other alters. So this person is claiming that they have DID, endogenic, and that also they are having a crush on another personality inside themselves. Too much. Too much, too much. It's a no from me. Next. Here we have a post that says, being non-trauma doesn't make you fake, it makes you rare. If you are diagnosed as non-trauma, yes, it makes you rare. If you are self-diagnosing as endogenic or non-trauma, it makes you potentially rare, but potentially not because you are not a doctor. Here we have another one. To be honest, whenever I see someone opposing self-diagnosis, whether they're trans or multiple or autistic, even though there are so many detailed arguments to give them that, 
I really want to make them into a master post. I pretty much just want to scream, if you are siding with the doctors, you are siding with your oppressors. So why are doctors oppressors? I mean, I know that there are shitty doctors and doctors who don't do their job well, but if you're just going to categorize every single doctor, even ER doctors who save people's lives as oppressors, that's crap. Um, yeah. Also, when you're saying this, you are still glamorizing being ill. People need to turn to doctors to get the help they need. I needed to turn to a doctor when I had depression to get the medication I needed. That is not a joke. That is not something you glamorize to say, they're your oppressors, you're fighting against them. Like, no, shut up, man. Here we go. Self-diagnosed people put so much energy into research and self-examination. They work so hard to overcome internalized ableism and the ableism in society around them to discover who they truly are. Neurodivergent and mentally ill self-diagnosed people, you are valid and, ab and so absolutely awesome. Thank you for making a community, for making my community a more open and inclusive place. Do self-diagnosed people put in over eight years of schooling and then experience? Because if they don't, I don't care how much research you put into it until you get a proper diagnosis you are a self-diagnosed person, and people will not take that seriously. Why? Because you're not a doctor. It's not against you. It's not like the world is against these people. It's that doctors go to school for a reason. They exist for a reason. They're high paid for a reason. Last post. Neurotypical. You can't just say you're psychotic even if you think you're hallucinating and you need a doctor to diagnose you. Neurotypical. Donald Trump is a psychopath. A neurotypical person will say that because if you're psychotic and you're self-diagnosed, you might be something else. There are plenty of other things that you could be. There are plenty of things that have very similar symptoms. So you need to go see a doctor. And the neurotypical is like fun to make fun of apparently on Tumblr, but they're right. Go see a doctor. Go see what the deal is. Then when the neurotypical says Donald Trump is a psychopath, if you use the term psychopath conversationally with the connotations of a conversational tone, it means that he's a bad person, he's crazy. We all know this. It's kind of like the same way that people use the term, oh, that person's so OCD. I don't like when people do that, but when they use it, they just say that the person's like a control freak or obsessed with being clean. They don't mean it as the exact definition, and it's the same with this. So that's a weak argument, to say the least. Anyways, guys, please let me know what you think about this shit show. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.